Green Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host, Jim Sella, in studio, J Dash. Big Steelers win, but Dash, I think the most important outcome from this game is probably the fact that you owe Easy a pack of heat. Pack of heat, we bet on if D'Angelo would have 100 yards or not. And it's a rolled pack of heat, so you actually have to do work, and you can't just go buy him. Or are you going to just cheat and buy him? No, definitely not going to buy him. <laughs> Great game by the Pittsburgh Steelers. A little bit of a sloppy game, so maybe not a great performance, but it was well, great because it's a victory. But with the rain, then, you know, yeah, both sloppy, teams sloppy had a sloppy Sloppy game, but sloppy weather. You look, Ben was 19 of 37, had two picks. And Andy Dalton, 31 of 54. But he did have 366 yards and had that touchdown at the end. And really, they got enough pressure on him to not necessarily cause him to make mistakes, but he really never got the ball downfield much in this game or anything. He was really thinking and dunking. And it, until the end of the game there, he had that uh, drive where he did get the ball into the end zone. He went 7-for-7. Seven seven, but really, he never got anything going, even though he did have those 366 yards. Now, Bengals fans are going to claim they got cheated. There was a couple close calls on some penalties. There was the no-call touchdown in the back of the end zone that after they looked at it, they – it kind of looked like well, it was a touchdown. Well, I said it right when it happened. It <clears throat> definitely was a touchdown, and it should have been a touchdown. They ended up getting three there, so you could have given them four points there. But and Tyler, Tyler Boyd, Boyd didn't fumble. He definitely didn't fumble. I mean, I don't know what to say. I was watching this game, and Tyler Boyd, to me, looks very good. He looks comfortable out there. He doesn't really look like a rookie. Now, he did have that mistake, I guess, in quotes, at the end of the game, fumbling. But really, I mean, it wasn't a fumble. He had six catches for 78 yards. He really looks good, and I think that, I think he looked better than LaFell for sure. LaFell had an okay game, just three catches for 39 yards. <laughs> but I think Tyler Boyd looks like the second-best receiver on this team, and really the first-best receiver. They shut down A.J. Green. Yeah, Two now, catches, 38 yards. Do you think that Boyd had a good game because they focused so much on shutting down Green and LaFell that, I mean – Boyd was pretty much on Sean Davis a lot of the time because Davis is our nickel back, and he's safety, not even a nickel corner. So is it a product of a rookie going against a rookie and Boyd being in the more comfortable position, or do you think he really is as good as advertised? I mean, he's not going to go out there and have 78, 80 yards every every game or anything, but you can see you can trust this guy, and I think why he did go to him more in this game is, yeah, A.J. Green was somewhat shut down, but I think the weather helped shut him down too because, like I said, Dalton really couldn't get the ball downfield. Their longest pass was 29 yards. Yeah, the Steelers connected with Sammy Coates on a long pass. A couple they, of them. They tried uh, to Brown, maybe not deep, deep, but they tried a couple longer passes to Brown that didn't work out, and I think there was one maybe to DHB, or maybe he just got hit hard and, and didn't come up with it. But the Steelers, other than Sammy Coates, really weren't that successful going downfield today either because of the weather. Yeah, like I said, well, even with Coates, game. too, sorry to cut you off, but that one got picked off. You know, Ben yeah. threw it a little too far, and Coates kind of slowed down just a tiny bit. And... Yeah, but he did come up with 97 yards again. This guy has four catches on the season, and he's pr on pace for 1,000 yards. Beast. It is a beast, and you've seen they ran a reverse with him, too, so maybe he's going to get more involved that way as well and kind of turn into that Martavis Bryant. And I know seeing this, I'm kind of like, forget Martavis if they cut him, whatever, but wouldn't it be nice to have Coates and Bryant on the outside with Rodgers and Brown in, in the slot and four wide? It'd be ridiculous. It would be beast mode. But really, Antonio Brown, man, it's not like Ben didn't try to get him the ball. They, they, played, they covered him pretty well in this game yeah. as well. He had 11 targets, just four receptions. They got physical with him. That one play in the end zone, Carlos Dansby shoved him to the ground twice, and Brown got up looking for a flag, and he got no love. Then Dansby got in his face a little bit after the play. But other than that, there really wasn't too many heated moments after plays. I think Burfick mm -hmm. being out, he's really the one. He's the catalyst for that, and then I think Pac-Man feeds off of it. Because you actually seen Pac-Man behave himself for a few years there before Burfick got there after Pac-Man kept getting arrested. So I think he's more of a follower. He follows Burfick's bad example, and then <laughs> chaos ensues. Brown did have a uh, drop, though. That's yeah, not big a big drop. Hit him right but in again, the chest. I think it has to do with the weather. But w what was big to me 
is the tight ends in this game. Both of them coming up with a touchdown. Jesse James, three catches, 29 yards in the touch. Xavier Grimble, man, he came up with that big third down reception too when Grimble. Ben was getting dragged to the ground. And it, I mean, it was a good pass, but it wasn't really to him. And he came up with a great catch on the ground there. Doing work. D'Angelo Williams, just a shade under 100. He had a good game, though. A lot of touches. Four Grind catches, 38 yards, and a touchdown as well. So Believe he it. had what? Two uh, touchdowns on the day. 132 it. yards total on the ground. No, no, just one touchdown. Oh, yeah, he didn't get the rushing touchdown. There was no rushing touchdown. Still another good outing by D'Angelo. Le'Veon Bell still out for one more game, so I kind of expect to see the same thing out of Williams next week. Uh, I do as well, and it might be my key to victory for the third time. And really, D'Angelo Williams was the biggest player for the Steelers offense in this game as well, if you ask me. I mean, you look, he, he was the one that carried the load, 32 carries on the ground, and really no one blew it up in the passing game. Sammy Coates led the team with those 97 yards. Behind him, Brown had 39, and D'Angelo had 38, plus D'Angelo got into the end zone as well. Eli Rogers really didn't do much in this game. So really, if you look, Eli Rogers had one good half so far. So we'll have to see. Like I said, I expect him to be inconsistent. But I do want to see more out of him. And I want to see him stay in a slot and be a part of this offense moving forward. Now, we both predicted the Steelers would try to pressure Dalton a little more than they tried to pressure Kirk Cousins. And I feel like the Steelers got pressure on Dalton, but they only got the one, maybe two sacks. I don't know if they're going to credit him for the other one. Was it a, a good outing by the defense, or was it just Dalton, like I predicted, and, and I'm not just the offense for Cincinnati taking a step back? That offensive line's not as good as it has been. Well, again, I, I think it has to do with the weather, man. I, I, I think they figured Dalton really wasn't trying to go down the field, so they weren't blitzing that much. They were just sending th three pass rushers, really, just the defensive line, and they just kept everybody back, back, in my opinion. If the weather was different, I think that would have been blitzing more in this game. And it helped that they were shutting down the run. In a game where it's raining out and the team can't run, I mean, I think that was a good move what they did. But I think we'll see them blitzing more moving forward. Do you have to get a sack to be considered pressure? <laughs> no. No. Easy thinks so, though. According to Easy, if you don't sack them, you got zero pressure on the quarterback. The one thing I'll say for the defense, they did their normal let Cincinnati drive down the field, but they tightened up again in the red zone. A couple big stops. They held them to three, three times early in the game. If they score touchdowns on even one of those possessions, this is a totally different football game. The one big play of the game was when actually they had the ball down at the goal line, and then who who was it that had a pass interference in the oh, end zone? Oh, I think it was. And then they were able to stop him again yeah. and just hold him to a field goal. So this defense is really coming up big. Yep, they let up a lot of passing yards again, 366, but just one touchdown pass and nothing rushing. 18 carries total for Cincinnati, 46 yards. That's a 2.6 yard per carry average. So, again, if all the team can do is pass against you, Ian, you step it up when they're in the red zone. I mean, it's going to be hard for teams to score more than 20 points against you. And right now, what, 16 points in each of the first two games of the season? Yeah, I mean, really, to me, as long as you keep that points per game at, at a low total, or at least 21 or under, you really give this football team a good chance to win. In my opinion, if, say, you give up 300, 325 yards passing, and you only give up 45, 50 yards rushing. So you're giving up under 400 yards for the game. Well, what's the difference if you give up 150 rushing and 250 passing? You know what I mean? Like, why well, does it matter where the yards come from as think, long as the points don't come? I think the big difference is if the, if it is coming in the rushing game, it, it makes it a lot harder on your defense because when you, you're getting run all over, I mean, it, it makes everything that much harder. And if teams can run all over you, I mean, it's it's hard to beat anyone, really. Well, yeah, I'm not necessarily saying on the field. I'm just saying on the stat sheet, everybody complains that we give up big passing yards, but we're not giving up the rushing yards. Yeah, I so. get it. All I'm saying is it's better we're giving up the passing oh, yards yeah. than it is the rushing When yards. you physically get beat up in the running game, you just lose the will to play, basically, and you just physically can't take it. I mean, you're gassed. You're beat up, so you yeah. can't chase people down the field. You miss tackles, and that's when you start making mental mistakes. Football's about being... Hot in the heart and cold in the mind. And when your body is just so physically exhausted, you can't be either. 
It was good to see Ryan Shazier not leave this football game with an injury. Is that the first time in his career he's made it through a whole game without getting hurt? You're dead wrong. He did lead the defense in tackles, though. He had 11 total and five solo tackles. This They had nine passes defended in this game, too. I mean, this the secondary looks good to me, man. So far, everything has looked great to me. I know there's a couple plays. Uh, Cockrell actually kind of looks the worst on his defense so far. I mean, he's the one that stands out a little bit. But other than that, man, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. I did expect it to be a tiny bit better than last season, but it, it's been levels above last season so far. How about Mike Mitchell headhunting all through the early parts of this game? That was ridiculous. Why has he got to do that? Yeah, there was two plays there where I thought he could have got a penalty. The one, I mean, the second one wasn't as bad. He didn't hit him, but it looked like he Oh, I mean, if he, he would have hit him, feet. dude, he would have yeah. drilled him. It was him. ridiculous, man. I don't know what he's doing. And then they got Antonio Brown punt returning again. I'm scared yeah. about that. I think it was because it was the Bengals, though, because I think he does have a few returns on the Bengals. It was time. deep in our own territory, too, so maybe they were worried about an Eli Rogers fumble. So, you know what I mean? Sometimes they put Brown in there situationally because you did see Eli in there a couple times after Brown was doing it in the early going. With, yeah, Eli with had, the rain and being backed up against your own end zone, you, you want to make sure the guy at least catches it. Eli had three punt returns. Antonio Brown had two. They both averaged nine yards per return. Return games just beat in the NFL anymore. Punt returns are still fun, but kickoffs are stupid. They're still talking about getting rid of the kickoff, which I don't know. So Bengals fans are probably pissed right now because of those oh, two I bet. calls. Yeah, I mean the two sure calls they, and then the they, non-touchdown. They're definitely going to say that's the reason they lost this football game. When in reality, both teams played a sloppy game because of sloppy conditions and it's a division game so it's it's a hard fought football game but the Steelers just made enough plays and took advantages of the opportunities they were given and unfortunately Cincinnati had some bad luck calls I mean it happens it happens to every team in every sport it's definitely happened to, to the Steelers before but I will say the difference in this game wasn't the bad calls the difference in this game was that Pittsburgh could run the ball and yep. Cincinnati couldn't believe it because even though Ben threw more picks, the Steelers dominated on the ground. That's why I'm giving my Offensive Player of the Week to D'Angelo Williams again, man. Like I'm, I said, 94 yards. It was a little bit tougher this time around, obviously, than it was last week. He had 32 carries, just a 2.9 yard per carry average. But, again, he found the end zone in the passing game, had 38 yards receiving. And really, there's no one else that really stands out. Big Ben was kind of inefficient in this game, obviously due to the weather, had the two turnovers or whatever. i got to give it to D'Angelo Williams again. I'm going to give it to the whole offensive line because I really feel like they played a good game. They struggled a little bit in pass protection. I feel like they got shoved back into Ben's face quick off a couple snaps. But that's the footing thing, too, with the wet grass. When you're a defensive guy... You're staying low and you're driving, so you have the better footing. When you're the offensive lineman, you're trying to plant and hold your ground. So in poor conditions, it's a lot easier for you to be pushed back than for you to push them back. And like I said, it was a lot harder on D'Angelo this game. If I was going to give it to the line along with D'Angelo, I would have gave it to them last week. I think they looked a lot better last oh, week. Oh, they definitely did look better last week. I just felt like against a, a, a pretty decent front seven for Cincinnati. They held their own. How about defensively? Nobody really stood out too much. Ryan Shazier, I mean, he's all over the field. Golden did have that one nice play where they th – it was actually the one that was the touchdown to Azuma or whatever his name is that uh, Robert Golden, when Azuma caught the ball in the air, Robert Golden, like, pushed him Shot out of bounds. Them. So, I mean, he that was a nice play. He the fumble, too, the Tyler Boyd mm. fumble, non-fumble. Yeah, and he was second on a team in tackles, man. Nine total tackles, five solo. Had All a right. pass defended as well. He sold me. I'm giving it to Golden. Right. Shazir's got enough player of the games for there me. There you go. Special teams player of the game, Boswell. Well, he did make a 49-yard field goal. I'll give it to Jordan Berry, though, man. 47.1-yard mm. average. Eight punts, 377 yards. He punted the hell out of the ball today. Kevin Huber actually beat him out, though. He had nine punts for 407 yards. Good Lord. Punt City. What's that? 784 yards in punts. Nice. That's beast mode. There's a game from the freaking 80s. Actually, their kicker sucks. Did you see him in this game? He was shanking them. Yeah, he did shank right. them. A couple of them really in, Put them in back in his end. position. Yeah. The one time the Steelers didn't capitalize, though, and I thought that might come back to bite them. Luckily, it didn't. 
really, I think it was just, and really I'm not blaming it on anything. I, I think the Steelers earned the victory, but the Steelers took advantage of their opportunities and the Bengals caught some bad luck. You know, you mix that in. And, and they the, weren't able to take advantage of the opportunities that their defense exactly, gave them. Yeah. Again, Big Ben with those two picks. I mean, The Bengals the were deep were... in our territory three times and had to settle for three. You score touchdowns there, you win those football games. Good teams score touchdowns there. You know, the Steelers were a good team, and they held them and, and kept them from scoring a touchdown. So this game, not that it's going to seal anything, but it could go a long way in deciding the division come the end of the season because I think Pittsburgh and Cincinnati are going to finish somewhere in and around each other. And if Pittsburgh can manage to win the game in Cincinnati, which they do do a lot, that that's going to go a long ways in the tiebreaker and just obviously overall record. Tell you what, though, they almost put this game out of hand pretty early as well. It was twenty four six there in the third quarter. They could have shut it down. Yeah, but Cincinnati came back with, like I said, that drive where Dalton actually looked like himself for at least one drive where he went. I think it was seven for seven and had that touchdown pass. Oh, you seen Dalton limping around after a couple big hits mm -hmm. on him? I heard early reports are he has a torn labia, so we don't <laughs> know if he'll be in next week or not. I think that's false. Mm, I don't know. It's a pretty good source. The fire crotch hair. Oh, yeah, we, we figured it out, too, folks. The reason he needed a new helmet is because the rain was putting out his fire crotch hair, and he needed one without holes in it. That's why he was a piece of crap today. <laughs> I did mention the score would be 24-17, though. Oh, yeah, I don't remember what I picked. Something a little higher. Yeah, something 24, 33-24 or something. Mm, yeah. Yeah, almost. I'll take it. A Maybe if is, it wasn't raining. A win is a win, man. Any way you can get it. And remember, we did the early uh, previews you know, in the off season, and before we found out Le'Veon was going to be suspended, I, I think we all had him going at least one and one at worst in the first two games or whatever. But now sitting here at two and oh, Pittsburgh puts themselves in a good position and they, they struggled in the first game in the last couple seasons and they put themselves into, you know, back themselves into a corner a little bit early in some seasons and had to dig themselves out. So it's really nice to start two and oh, it goes a long way. You got Cincinnati at one and one now. I'm not sure what Baltimore did yet. So they beat Cleveland. Okay. So they're at two and oh, yeah. So you got the Steelers and Baltimore. Cleveland was up 20 to nothing early in that game. Josh McCown score. got hurt, man. He came back in. I well, mean, yeah, he, but he back was, in. He was hurt. Oh, I don't want to hear it, man. I mean, he's not, Cleveland he's not sucks. great to begin with. Quit, get, then... quit trying to make excuses for Cleveland now. Well, Where I'm did not making excuses for Cleveland. Yes, They're terrible. Are. I didn't predict them to win a lot of football games. I just predicted their offense to score a lot of points. Yeah, and then when RG3 went down, you said they'll be even better. Well, yeah, and they were good, and then McCown got hurt, man. Get out of here. He McCown was, was beast when he was if healthy. If he was that hurt, he, he wouldn't have came back well, in the yeah, game. nobody left. You don't leave your third-string quarterback Terrell in. Pryor. Terrell Pryor. Well, he should have just played quarterback. They might as well just switch him back. Dude's beast. Yeah. Garbage. They are garbage. So right now, Pittsburgh and Ravens sitting at the top of the division. When do we and, play the Ravens? Do you know? I'll look here in a second. But going to Philly next week, man, without Le'Veon Bell, it does look like they have a very, very good chance of being 3-0. and And to me, it has to do with D'Angelo Williams so far is why they're sitting at 2-0. and Along with the defense. Again, the defense only let up 32 points in these two games. But D'Angelo Williams, again, it was a harder week for him. It, he didn't have the high average per carry. But... They didn't stop giving him the ball, and that's exactly what I wanted him to see, and he ended up getting in the end zone late in the game. D'Angelo Williams, to me, has been the most valuable player on this team so far. At one point in the game, I seen a graphic that said D'Angelo Williams has touched the ball on like 60-something plays out of 136 or somewhere yeah. around there. So like damn near half the plays of the Steelers' offense this year, D'Angelo Williams has touched the football. At the Ravens, November 6th. That is after the Patriots. Ooh, that's a big game. That's after a bye week too, right? Yes. It's going to be an awesome game. I can't wait. Hopefully West Virginia shows Steeler games. How about Antonio Brown, though? Do you still think he, he can get to 2,000 yards? I mean, you've got to be gonna pretty consistent. He's going to have to have a 200-yard game to get there uh, now. Well, I mean, I could see him definitely having a 200-yard game, but still, I mean, he can't have another game like this the rest of the season for no, sure. No, you got to average... A little over 130 or somewhere around there. I, I don't. I, yeah. I haven't done the math. A little under 130, I think it okay. is. Okay. 
Yeah, but still, he's going to have to have a big game to be able to do that. Anything else for the fans today? No. That's it. Fans, questions, comments. You want to cheer us on or rip on the bangles? Hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. We will be posting a lot of fun Steeler stuff and a lot of anti bangle stuff because it's just hilarious because we own you, Cincinnati. Keep coming back to YouTube. Keep clicking subscribe. Let's keep winning, Pittsburgh. I love it.